Welcome back. In this series, I'm building out my own cloud computing platform, kind of like AWS using bare metal servers, and I'm calling this platform a heavy metal cloud. My goal today is to answer a few questions. Number one, what hardware will you need? Number two, what are the costs? And number three, if you're on a tight budget, how can you save some money? To get started, let's take a quick look at the architecture. At the bottom, we have our networking backbone. This will be made up of a gigabit ethernet switch and cables. I'm using an eight port switch, which should be enough for my needs. And by the way, if you need a refresher about how this stuff works, I have a whole video series about networking, link in the description below. Moving up the diagram, we have the physical servers. And you can see I'm using five servers in my cloud. The first server will be running a firewall and routing platform called OpenSense. And I'll be using it for things like DNS, DHCP, and load balancing. Now, OpenSense can run on pretty low-end hardware. For my cluster, I'm using an inexpensive Intel Nook with four cores and eight gigabytes of RAM. You really don't have to spend a lot of money here. The next server is what I call a platform server. It'll be used for shared services for my applications, things like single sign-on, identity providers, and a Docker registry. Since the platform server is gonna be loaded up with a lot of services, I'll be using a server with the higher specs. In this case, I'm using a B-Link server with 32 gigabytes of RAM and eight cores. And for the hard drive, I'll be using a one terabyte NVMe drive. The last three servers will host my applications or workloads and they'll run a virtualization platform called Proxmox. What Proxmox gives us is the ability to create and manage virtual machines. And this will give us a lot of flexibility with our applications and mimic the virtual machines you can provision using a cloud like AWS. Another nice feature built into Proxmox is a subsystem called Ceph. And Ceph will look like one big hard drive across all three Proxmox servers. And this is similar to Elastic Block Stores in AWS. But to make Ceph work, I'll have to install an extra hard drive on each server. So one drive for the operating system and one drive dedicated to Ceph. I'll also be adding some extra RAM into each of the Proxmox servers. Next, let's talk about the pricing. For the networking, we're looking at about $30 for the Ethernet switch and maybe $20 to $30 for the cables. For the physical servers, I'm using one Intel NUC, which goes for around $200. The remaining four servers will be from B-Link and cost about $300 each. Again, for the three Proxmox servers, I'm adding an extra hard drive and some extra memory. So the total for everything is roughly $2,000 US dollars. Keep in mind, this video is recorded in 2025, so your prices may vary if you're watching this at a later date. Now, $2,000 is a pretty big commitment. So what can you do if you're on a tight budget? There are a few options. You could manually set up DNS and IP addressing and get rid of the OpenSense server. Keep in mind, you always have the option to add it again later. The applications in the platform server can also be run on your Proxmox cluster. The reason I decided to go with a separate platform server is I wanted the ability to experiment with my Proxmox cluster. I wanted to be able to tear it down and rebuild it and not worry about losing my shared services. But if you're on a budget or you just want to simplify things, you could just put everything in the Proxmox cluster. And finally, you can scale your Proxmox cluster down to just one server and start from there. You'll lose some functionality like Ceph, but you can always expand the cluster later. In a future video, I'll show you how you can easily add a new Proxmox node to your cluster. Scaling back our physical servers to just one reduces our cost to roughly 500 US dollars. Now, you might be able to use some existing hardware and reduce your cost even more. And that covers the hardware components of the cloud. In my next video, I'm gonna dive into a complicated topic called Public Key Infrastructure, or PKI. PKI is used to create TLS certificates that I'll use to encrypt all the traffic in the cloud. And I'll also introduce a domain name that I'll be using for this series, heavymetalcloud.lan. And that wraps up our video for today. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you in the next video.